Hello, folks. Welcome to Jeremy Hadler's YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jeremy Hadler, and welcome to season two of the GOAT series, folks, featuring the Las Vegas Raiders or Oakland Raiders back in their time with special guest Dr. Donna Grove. And today we're going to be talking about who is the greatest Raiders player of all time in franchise history up to this point. Dr. Grove, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. And we'll be going over the rules like I always do here, folks, where I sh we choose five candidates and we have honorable mentions. But when we have our special guests on, like Dr. Grove, she gets to choose her honorable mention. But we'll be also be talking about people who should be deserving of honorable mention, too, of that sort. And at the end of the video, we choose our ultimate Raider GOAT, folks. And this includes from our previous of the Oakland and the Las Vegas Raiders have combined all of that of the franchise history, folks. But we'll start off here, folks, with our special guest, Dr. Grove. Who do you have for your honorable mention here of the Las Vegas Raiders? You know, Marcus Allen is probably the honorable mention that um, I would have talked about. Um, but I think that um, I have someone that is not a player. Can I pick someone who is That's not fine. a player? That is, fine. that is fine. Because I really think that the impact that John Madden had in the 10 years that he was coaching. Yeah, I mean, he won 100 games in mm -hmm. what, like? 10 seasons or less than 10 seasons. I don't remember exactly. I don't have the stats in front of me, yeah. um, but the impact that he had on the program, the impact he had um, as a coach coming in. And then even after as a commentator um, on the entire game of football. And I just think that um, John Madden should definitely be in our honorable mention. Definitely agree on that, especially with Madden. Always fun seeing like how he dropped the plays on the TV or draw on the TV sort of that way. That was pretty cool. Yeah, but even as a coach, I mean, yeah. um, he in in his seasons he had a hundred wins mm -hmm. um, and coached for 10, 10 years. Like, yeah, that's pretty. You know, that's pretty impressive. I think he really kind of made the culture of what. The Raiders culture was at that time in the 70s before your time, Jeremy, and in the 80s, um, yeah. like that feared culture um, of, you know, the Raiders, right? Like, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I just think that the impact that he had still kind of lingers today. I would remiss to not say Al Davis, but, you know, I don't I, I don't want to be trumped out by the NFL. <laughs> Yeah, for me, if honorable mention, I'm going to go back to what you were saying about Marcus Allen. I definitely think Marcus Allen deserves it. I would have put Charles Woods in here. I would have, but I feel like Marcus Allen made more of an impact. Like, obviously, Charles, he had a phenomenal career with the Raiders and also my team, too. But mostly the Raiders, I'll say that. But Marcus Allen, I feel like he created a culture, too, like what John Madden you were saying about with the Raiders. Like, he won a Super Bowl with the Raiders. He was a Super Bowl MVP, won an MVP, won an Offensive Player of the Year award, two first team, one second team. One-time rushing yards leader, one-time scoring leader, five-time Pro Bowler, one-time rushing TDs leader. He played for the Raiders for 11 seasons, seems so a Hall of Famer. And the stats to go about him, folks, he had over 8,545 rushing yards, 79 rushing TDs, 446 receptions for 4,258 receiving yards, 18 total TDs, 12,803 total scrimmage yards. I mean, you could play him in the passing game and the run game, too. But I feel like he was a deadly force, especially when John Madden had him in the game. I feel like he was a deadly force. I don't know. What are your thoughts about him, Dr. Grove? Yeah, I mean, Marcus Allen was a Raider all-timer, right? Like, he was one of the best running backs of his era. I think that he just had a presence on the field. And when he got the ball, like, you just knew that he was going to do something with it. So, um, yeah, I, I agree with Marcus Allen. Um, I wish that we could put him a little bit higher and not an honorable mention, <laughs> but I mean, they can't all be, you know, yeah. they can all be good. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. So yeah, I'm a fan of Marcus Allen. I would agree with your honorable mention as well. Okay. Now let's get to our first candidate here on this list. We got is Howie Long. Now, for folks that mostly know him is through his Skechers commercial on his uh, shoe brand or on the Fox network on every Fox Sunday, you all know. But he's more importantly known for playing the Raiders for 13 seasons. He's a Hall of Famer, one-time Super Bowl champion, one-time co-defensive player of the year, three first-team All-Pro, two second-team All-Pro, eight Pro Bowls. Stats, well, the stats weren't really that big back then because it didn't statistically count all of his stats. But what I could find on Pro Football Reference was he had 10 fumble recoveries. 
91.5 sacks. Those were the total stats. And Howie Long, I mean, defensive tackle, great defensive player. Dr. Grove, what do you have about him? Um, well, I I love Howie Long. I think that he, in his playing, was another force to be reckoned with. I love the defense. I'm a defensive kind of person. So when a defensive player kind of is in this realm of goats, I think it's something um, to be said because everybody loves the glory of, you know, running the touchdowns or catching the balls or throwing the balls. So the other thing I really love about Howie Long is that he went to college at Villanova. And I think that you know, anyone that uh, goes to college at a, a Pennsylvania school, I think, um, earns that uh, respect in my book um, mm-hmm. because Pennsylvania football is tough football. Um, it is. I, yeah. And I think that, you know, his staying power within the football community is really huge. As a player, uh, obviously, you know, he was a force to be reckoned with. I think that as the play kind of evolves, I think that you'll see that there's going to be players that outdo him in terms of stats. Mm -hmm. But for for that era, I do believe that he is up there and is really should be in this series of excellent players. Definitely. I mean, he also had two great sons that played in the NFL, Kyle Long and Chris Long. Chris won a World uh, Super Bowl with the Eagles. And then he had Kyle, his son, Kyle, played for the Chicago Bears and offensive lineman. Yeah, but I mean... Can we really count that as part of uh, no. his well, career? He, gener- <laughs> he, he generated great football history. We could say that family history-wise. Yeah, family history-wise. But, you know, when you have connections, it's easier, right? Yes. <laughs> True. True. It's but not so much of an uphill, you know, battle. So That's that's true. I mean, you can, we'll give consideration for a little sure. bit of that. He generated, that's a bonus, we'll say for him, bonus for him. But yeah. Howie, I mean, great player overall, especially the Raiders. And part of like with the John Madden era, but like the 13 seasons there, like he was great. Like not only on the field that we just mentioned, but off the field too, like he was very helpful. And obviously we give bonus to him playing uh, football in a Pennsylvania college in Pennsylvania. Like you got to give credit, like Villanova, like, you never see any players come out, like especially in the NFL draft, come out of Villanova. You rarely see that, and Howie was one of them, and he set the bar for Villanova football players. Yeah, and I just want to mention I have a signed football from um, Marcus Allen sitting over here, and then I have a signed football or a signed helmet from Howie Long sitting over there. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> so far so good, Jeremy. <laughs> yes. So far, so good. Now, we'll move on to another person, which we got to talk about a little before we started this uh, video, which is Tim Brown. Mm. Tim Brown played 16 seasons for the Raiders. He's a Hall Mm -hmm. of Famer, one-time second-team All-Pro, nine-time Pro Pro Bowler, one-time receptions co-leader, one-time kickoff return yards leader. His stats, folks, which is more of telling-wise, like Marcus Allen, his stats. 1,070 receptions for 14,734 receiving yards, 99 receiving TDs, and over 14,924 total scrimmage yards. Now, the things I remember of watching the highlight tape on YouTube from what I saw and read articles about him, and then we'll get to Dr. Rove's thoughts on him, speed, agility, and reliable hands. He was very good with his hands of catching, had a great speed. Dr. Grove, I leave the floor to you. What do you think about Tim Brown? Uh, first of all, as a person, Tim Brown, like, l- let's leave the football stats alone for a second. But what a classy dude. He is one of the nicest people ever. He is kind. Uh, his demeanor on the field is great. His demeanor b- demeanor off the field is great. A Heisman Trophy winner. Went to Notre Dame. Just a re- really great dude. Um, there he is right there. We've got to love Ooh. him. Right. Um, And I mean, I think that um, watching him play and I started liking the Raiders probably um, with like his third or fourth season. Mm -hmm. Um, And so he was someone that I totally loved watching his skill set on the field, uh, just a smooth player. Right. Like you knew that he was Mr. Reliable. You knew that um, if, you know, the ball was thrown to him. It was going to be good. The other thing I want to talk about with Tim Brown, he had like, was it nine or eight mediocre quarterbacks in in his seasons playing? Mm-hmm. Um, and I read an article um, and I 
I can't really place uh, where the article came from, but um, it said that if Tim Brown was across the bay um, and had the quarterback that Jerry Rice had, he would have probably surpassed Jerry Rice's statistics. And so that being said, like Tim Brown had mediocre quarterbacks and mm -hmm. posted these numbers. Can you only imagine if he had, you know, a GOAT quarterback? Yeah. I mean, I know a player like in like today's game, like DeAndre Hopkins, I always think about like when you were mentioning Tim Brown, like he had mediocre quarterbacks, like he would get almost nobody. I mean, he had Kyle Murray technically, but that didn't last long, unfortunately. But I mean, with Tim Brown, like th as you bring that up with Jerry Rice's, like if he had that great quarterback, I definitely think he would have caught up to Jerry Rice. I don't know if he would have outbeaten him of skill wise, but statistically, yes, I agree with you. He could have definitely beat him there. And I like those mediocre quarterbacks. I mean, it's just goes to show like how well the Raiders quarterbacks are in history. No offense, but with Tim Brown, like he made the best out of what you could with the quarterback and he made try to get him to like win the Super Bowl or like try to get him to go far like in the season. Like that's something to appreciate about Tim Brown. Like, he carried the load and had the chip on his shoulder. Right. And and he was a loyal Raider. Like he wasn't trying to team hop. He wanted to do do the best that he could um with the Raiders. Um I think like I follow him on social media and he is so inspirational and he does so much for his community and, you know, just a standout guy on and off the field, I think. And isn't that what we want to celebrate? Yes, definitely. We want to celebrate that. Now we move on to our next player, which this guy played a very long time like Tim Brown. This guy played 15 seasons for the Raiders. That is Jim Otto. Jim Otto. He's a one-time first-team All-Pro, one-second-team All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, one-time AFL champion, which is technically before the Super Bowls, but I can, in my opinion, I consider that as a championship in my degree. Nine first-team All-Pro, All-AFL, which is also a Pro Bowls, and also nine-time AFL All-Star. Again, same side of like first-team All-Pro in the NFL and All-Star Pro Bowl is what I consider. And he also made the AFL all-time team, which is like the NFL all-time team. Now, the things that really stuck out to me when I did him in my first season when I talked about Jim Otto was he's a tough player. He's a very tough player. He had over 40 surgeries in his career. 40 surgeries. That's, I don't know how that's seemingly possible when like most people don't get that many surgeries. The interesting more to go into that was he never missed a game until the devastating knee injury he had that forced him to retire after the 1974 season. But it's going to show he was a dedicated player, resilient, tough, as I mentioned, and durability also. What do you think about him, Dr. Rowe? Yeah, I mean, I think everything you said, you kind of hit the nail on the head. I think those 40 injuries resulted in almost 75 operations, um, and almost 30 of those were on his knee. So for him to kind of be resilient and have that grit and that toughness, um, and that's really what that Raiders organization was all about. So he embodied, double zero embodied, what the Raiders were really all about at that time. So, I mean, I think that he's an excellent player and obviously didn't watch him play live, but, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> Um, but you know, I think that he is, is one of the greatest Raiders players of all time. Yeah, definitely. Even arguably, and I said this on my first season about him, like arguably the greatest center of all time too, like the position yeah. that he did. And he was very dominant at his position. Like no one was compared to him, especially in his era. He was the most dominant player at his position, I would say. Yeah. And you know, being the center isn't an easy task. No, it is not, especially when you have to snap the ball. And, and as soon as you snap the ball, the defensive player is like nose tackles right in your face, like goes very quick. Besides blindside, I would argue that's the harder position to block. I would say center is like the second toughest position to block on the offensive line. Might be. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that all centers, you, you got to be tough. He wasn't that big, you know, like he was 6'2", I think, and like. 250 pounds like that's not that big that's no. kind of skinny for 6'2 right <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that, that I guess, is, yeah to today's standards right like people have gotten bigger over the decades players have gotten bigger over the decades so i mean so yeah i think he's definitely one of the greatest raiders players of all time definitely all right we move on to our next part and then we have our final player after this which we move on to an, another offensive line player for the raiders this guy played 16 seasons for the raiders that is Gene Upshaw, Gene Upshaw, two-time Super Bowl champion, three first-team All-Pro, five second-team All-Pro, 
six Pro Bowls, one-time AFL champion, two first-team All-AFL, one second-team All-AFL, captain of that Raiders offensive unit like Jim Otto. And the interesting fact that I do some trivia of my football trivia was that he's the only player in NFL history to reach the Super Bowl with the same team in three different decades. That is very rare. You never see that about him. And other things that, like, not only, like I just mentioned on the field, but off the field, he served as the NFL PA president. He helped, like, play a crucial role in the NFL where helping, like, create a powerful union for the players, like, with the rights such as their better contracts, health care, and working conditions. Like, he became part of, it, like, what we know today. Like, he helped start it up to make the NFL players, like, have better conditions and, like, get more, like, a better experience in playing the NFL. And other things that sticked out to me about him was he was consistent, very dominant, and very had good football IQ is what would really stick out to me about Gene Upshaw. What do you think about him, Dr. Rowe? Yeah, I mean, I think that he uh, – tough is what he was, right? Yeah. Um, a couple things that you didn't mention was um, he was on uh, the 1970s All-Decade team, which I believe that uh, Jim Otto was on as well. Um, and I think that he was on the 70, 75th anniversary all-time team and the NFL's and yep. the NFL's 100th anniversary all-time team. And I think that what he did do for the NFL Players Association is that the players are reaping those rewards now. He was a pioneer for the players. He was an advocate for the players. Um, and I think that um, they owe him a lot of gratitude for that because I think that without his guidance and his values, really, um, you know, he came from a small town and he, he valued what is important in sport. And without those values, I think that he wouldn't have brought the Players Association as far along as the, as far as he did. So I think players today owe him some some gratitude for that. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely do. All right. Move on to our last player and then we'll get to our ultimate goat here which this guy is nicknamed the snake, ladies and gentlemen. You never hear a football player's nickname be the snake, but that is Kenny Stabler, played 10 seasons for the Raiders. He's a one-time Super Bowl champion, one-time MVP, one-time op- uh, offensive player of the year, one-time first-team All-Pro, one-time second-team All-Pro, four-time Pro Bowler, led the league in passing TDs twice, two-time completion percentage leader, one-time NFL pass rating leader, stats folks, which – Weren't that fantastic given the time, but it was a different era, so we have to consider it during that time, which he had a 59.9 completion percentage, 19,078 passing yards, 150 passing TDs, 143 interceptions, 80, 80.2 pass range, had over 1,691 rushing yards. He had also 17 game-winning drives. Now, the things that I stick out with Kenny Stabler is really like he reminds me of like today's game Matthew Stafford a little bit where he gets he's very tough but he also has game winning drives and he had over 17 game winning drives in his career and was very clutch when he needed to be like honestly everyone will think of like Tom Brady and Joe Montana but Kenny Stabler he was very clutch in his era for quarterbacks and when you needed like to get a touchdown you needed to get in field goal range to win the game he was that guy to help you out and he had a very strong arm and he's very accurate too but those are like the kind of things that stick out to me. Like he was just a great fit for the Raiders organization, especially with that tough grind you mentioned before, Dr. Rob. I think that Kenny State really represents that. But what do you think about him? Yeah, I mean, if you watch if you watch his film, it's very like like he is a bit of a magician, right? Like he does all kinds of things out there, um, whether he's pedaling left, pedaling right. Um, he did some really interesting things. And um, when he competed, like what I saw on um, some news articles was that they named certain games and plays because of Kenny Stabler to the point that um, the immaculate reception wouldn't have even existed had it not uh, been for Kenny Stabler. And, um, you know, I just think that he was such an impact to the game and not only to I think he changed the way that quarterbacks played the game is what I think. I think he was the impetus of that change happening. Um, And, you know, having uh, the ability to run and throw and um, do it simultaneously and um, being a bit of a tough quarterback was really kind of, you know, something that was awesome, right? And um, 
he just, he was just great. Um, and the fact that, uh, you know, he was with the Raiders for so long, that was pretty amazing as well. I think he was with the Raiders for 10 years. Yes, 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Yeah. So, um, and as a quarterback at that time, that's pretty, pretty good. And, you know, he also had an excellent college career. But yeah, I mean, I think you can't say enough good things about Kenny Stabler either. You know, like he just a really great person all around. Um, and his statistics speak for themselves. Yeah, I think that's you pretty much hit all the, the points, Jeremy. Now we'll get to our go tier of who we think is the greatest Raiders player of all time in franchise history up to this point as we are now. That could change in like the next five years or maybe the next day if we really go to that. But probably just could be the next like decade, I would say, for this, given what the Raiders are. But we'll start with Dr. Grove here as our special guest. Who do you think is the greatest Raiders player of all time? Oh, that is so hard. And the reason why that's hard, and, and I'll just throw this out here. They're all different types of players, right? Yeah. Like you think that they're all playing different positions. So it's kind of comparing apples to oranges. Um, I'm going to have to go with my favorite um, and uh, mostly because of the number of seasons played, the number of seasons played without the type of elite support that you would expect. And I'm going to go with Tim Brown. I'm sure there's people that are going to disagree with me, but um, <laughs> I think for me, um, that's where my heart sits. Now, before the start of the video, I had my guy set, but then it kind of changed during this video because you brought up about the off field of how this player was very involved of like the community and all of that. To me, it comes down to two players for me. It comes down to Tim Brown and Jim Otto for me because A, Tim Brown, he didn't have the support, but he made what use you could make out of having those mediocre quarterbacks. But Jim Otto, I feel like is the GOAT to me because – not only did he go through those 40 surgeries, which I still don't know how it happened of that process, but he played for there a long time, over 16 years. He accomplished so much with the Raiders. And, like, honestly, he got to, like, where you want to be. He didn't win the Super Bowl with the Raiders like Gene Upshaw did. But I feel like Jim Otto has to be praised for what he did. And he's, like, regarded as, like, the best at his position and dominated at his position I would say he carried the torch for a bit for the Raiders. Like, obviously, with Tim Brown, he was trying to carry what you had with the quarterbacks and all. But some of the others, but I would say Jim Otto is probably my goat. I would say him. He may, Tim Brown may not have been the best player statistically in Raiders history if we're looking, but if we're comparing apples to oranges and we're looking at that whole package and we're looking at the person on and off the field, um, mm -hmm. I do think that Tim Brown really, um, you know, he, has a lot to be desired. And I don't know a lot about the other players and what they've done off the field. I don't know what Jim Otto has done off the field or um, Kenny Stabler, um, you know, during his time. So to be fair, um, mm -hmm. and, and there's definitely no disrespect to any other players out there. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah. So that's my personal opinion. I am a huge Tim Brown fan. I will always be a Tim Brown fan. He is my goat for the there Raiders. You um, and, you know, I would be rem remiss if I didn't mention uh, my favorite Raider quarterback, which was Rich Gannon. And, uh, you know, he went to University of Delaware and he had a great career. Um, again, didn't have a lot of support around him, but nice. he, he did a lot in his years as a Raider. Bo Jackson, um, Bo Jackson. Oh, he did. I mean, he had like three, three and a half seasons before he got injured. Had yeah. he not gotten injured, Bo would have lit the world on fire. He would have. Uh, yeah. And so, um, and unfortunately, my recent favorite, Josh Jacobs, decided to to go with your team. I know. I know. I know. I mean, you got the Vontae Adams, so we're fair. We need to get him on this channel and explain to us, both of us <laughs> why. So, um, yeah, and I think, like, you know, maybe it'll evolve. Maybe Tim Brown won't be my favorite forever, but for right now, he's my goat. There we go. You have it from Dr. Grove. Her favorite and her Raider goat is Tim Brown. But I got to ask you a quick question, Dr. Grove. Yes. Who do you think should have been mentioned on this list of, like, Obviously, we mentioned like candidates, but who do you think should have been like more like honorable mention wise? Like you mentioned Rich Gannon or any other players that stick out to you that should be more mentioned? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that Bo Jackson needs to be mentioned, but he had a, a short list. Well, I can tell you plenty of players who will never make the list. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had a string of them for the last 20 years. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm comfortable with that list. Um, you know, obviously, Jerry Rice came to play with Tim Brown for a few years. Um, but, you know, he's more of a 49er, so we'll let him stay there. I do. I did really like the dynamic of those two on the field. It was kind of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um, but I think most recently, I think players to watch are players like Max Crosby. And I think that he's going to continue to do great things. Well, folks, that will do it here for this episode. And stay tuned for our next episode. But until next time, folks, that's a wrap for the studio. Raiders, I mean, they good. They good. Yeah. Raiders, just win, baby. <laughs> yes. All Just right. Win. We'll see you next time, folks.